Lance Armstrong. You wrote in your book, quote, Lance had his own way of being a jerk to the peloton to get what he wanted. Explain that. In cycling, and I imagine it's this way in a lot of sports, the guys at the top have their way of staying at the top. And his way was he liked to be intimidating. He liked people to be afraid of him. And, and it wasn't as if he went around doing things uh, intentionally to try to try to look like a bully, but if he felt like somebody did something that was going to affect him or got in his way, he made sure they knew about it. He made sure that they understood that he believed he belonged in the front or that he believed that they should stay out of his way. How so? He would just say it a lot of the time or push people out of the way. I mean, he was, he was a bully. Um, that's not my personality. That's not how I would, would have done things, but that's his way of doing it, and, and it worked for him. I mean, he didn't have a lot of friends. You also wrote in your book, quote, for Lance, it was basically a war, and sometimes it wasn't even a war to win. It was a war to inflict suffering. How? The difference between Armstrong and I is he got satisfaction out of making people lose. He likes to, to see people lose. I got satisfaction out of winning, and it didn't really have anything else to do with other people. I mean, I'm sympathetic to them. I've been in their position before. But for his whole life, he's always been at the top. From the time he was 16, 17, he was, he was always treated as if he was royalty in the sport. And so for whatever reason, whether it's a personality thing or, or, or the, just the way he thinks, his satisfaction in winning is not in winning itself. It's in, it's in making sure other people don't win. And I, I can't relate to that. Do you have any idea why? No, but it's not a pleasant human being to be around. You said in your book that he would never allow anyone to ever goof around on the team, even if it was in the off time. What was the reasoning for that? He, he liked to be in complete control of whatever situation he found himself in. And so if he wasn't the guy telling the joke, you didn't laugh. If he wasn't the guy talking, nobody talked. Um, Again, it was his team. Uh, he, he, he was perfectly allowed to run it that way. And, and while I was there, I respected that, but I couldn't wait to get out of there once I realized what it was actually going to be like. I mean, it, once the, the novelty of being on the tour team with Lance wore off, I didn't have any desire to stay. Why did you begin getting frustrated with how the team sort of revolved around Lance? Well, because the team revolved around Lance in such a way that it prevented anyone else from getting any real results for themselves. And I guess I just expected that for the team that claimed to be the best team in the world and, and when you were trying to get a, a job with them or when they were negotiating with you, made it seem as though you, you should be honored to be on the team. Um, I thought that the, there would be a minimal amount of treatment from them that would be expected and that would be, we could at least hope to have the best bicycles. We could hope to have the best access to to whatever we needed to win. And, and if we were at a race and, and Lance wasn't there, it was almost like it didn't matter if anybody won the race. They didn't really care. And at some point, I decided that that wasn't good enough for me. I mean, I know it's not that way on other teams. They don't have somebody that goes that far out of their way to make sure that they're the only one that gets any of the credit. And I just became unhappy with it. I, I was ready to leave. Um, there never really would have been any conflict, but for the fact that um, when I wanted to leave, um, they demanded that I stay, and so that was being, I was being um, somehow um, disloyal to them for wanting to leave in the first place. When the fact is, I, I did my job better than they could ever have hoped, and I, and I, I worked through the end of my contract as well as anybody could have expected, and uh, that was, that resulted in some, some real tension between Lance and I, and, and I never really got over it, never really forgave him for it, and he never really wanted to be my friend after that, so the feelings, I guess, is mutual. You spoke about his mindset and how he could be an unpleasant person to be around. How would you describe his personality? He's a bully. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give him any credit other than that. Why? He, he, feel, he has a sense of entitlement that defies any kind of reason. I've never met anyone like it, and I don't hope to meet anyone else like it. Where do you think it comes from? I don't even care. What do you recall from your training sessions with him? The first year I was there on the team in 2002, uh, I spent a lot of time just he and I training. Um, 
we went to uh, Sam Moritz for probably two months before the tour in 2002. And I enjoyed it at that time. I mean, it was just he and I, he, when you're training that hard, you're often focused on that. And if there was something to talk about, about the racing, things like that, if, if I had a question, he'd give me advice. But Right, you're just getting into the right. elite ranks of cycling and right. you're so there was training with Lance Armstrong. Yeah. yeah, and there was a lot for me to learn. Uh, to me, there was a, a novelty that, oh, that overwhelmed the, the fact that it wasn't really just any fun, but I was learning a lot. That's what I wanted. Was a negative personality trait that glaring then, too? In hindsight, yeah, but I didn't notice it, and I okay. didn't... I guess I still believed a lot of the story, whatever that story is. What well, you got from reading the book, right? What what everyone else know, what everyone else knows about the story he's created. Um, but I, yeah, over time I just didn't find it pleasant.